So a couple months ago, I was thinking what would be a good way to sum up what happened to the climate in 2023? But not just the obvious things that people see and hear all the time. Like, yes, the CO2 concentration in our atmosphere has increased this year. Yes, there have been climate change fueled natural disasters, and yes, glaciers are still melting. But first of all, most people already know about this, plus it's depressing as hell. What about the progress that's been made? What steps have we taken over the last 365 days to fix the situation we're in? Thus, I present to you the State of the Climate 2023, an overview of some of the worst and best climate change news related to the year. And if you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button to support the channel and climate science on YouTube. A lot has happened since January 1st, so might as well just dive right into it. In the interest of not making people's climate anxiety any worse, we won't spend too long on the bad news. However, it is a fact that this year, just like the year before and the year before that, we have hit record high atmospheric carbon dioxide levels never before seen in at least the last 800,000 years. In May, where we typically see the highest levels of the year, the Mauna Loa Observatory recorded a concentration of 424 parts per million. This is roughly 50% higher than CO2 levels were at the start of the Industrial Revolution, and it is shockingly a direct result of human activity. Fittingly, this Northern Hemisphere summer was the hottest ever seen, breaking the previous record by 0.41 degrees Fahrenheit or 0.23 degrees Celsius. This was a major contributor to the natural disasters we saw between June and September, including but not limited to the wildfires in Canada and Maui, flooding in Libya, and record-shattering heat waves across Western Europe, Japan, multiple South American countries, and large parts of the Atlantic Ocean. It also doesn't help that we saw the beginning of El Nino this year. El Nino is a cyclical pattern in the Pacific Ocean that results in above-average water temperatures for multiple years. This then contributes to a warmer atmosphere, meaning we will likely see the effects of El Nino on top of our warmer climate unfold over the next few years. And just to hammer things home, in this year's IPCC synthesis report, it was stated that to keep warming below the 1.5 Celsius threshold, humanity will need to cut 50% of its greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. So yeah, that leaves us with about 6 years to reach these climate goals. Breaking the 1.5 Celsius threshold will not spell instant doom for the world, but just know that things are going to get more and more difficult for all life on Earth the longer we wait. Okay, well that's enough of the sad stuff. Whether you call it eco-anxiety, climate dread, or straight doomerism, it does about as much to help the climate crisis as taking a private jet. To quote Dune, fear is the mind killer, and focusing on negatives will only lead to apathy and hopelessness. So what progress has been made over the last year? Well, at the start of 2023, the former president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, who we have discussed previously on this channel, was replaced by Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, a climate activist who campaigned on protecting the Amazon. Under the previous Bolsonaro administration, Amazon deforestation saw a 60% increase, further harming one of the world's largest carbon reservoirs. However, within a day of taking office, Lula reinstated the Amazon Fund, a billion dollar program supporting conservation and indigenous stewardship in the Amazon that was halted under Bolsonaro. Protecting the Amazon will be critical in our fight against rising CO2 levels, and according to Brazilian satellite data, deforestation rates plunged 34% under Lula's plans. On the other side of the world, England instated a ban this year on single-use plastics, tackling an easy portion of their carbon emissions. Plastics generate greenhouse gases at every single stage in their life cycle, so the more the demand for them shrinks, the better. Not to mention, single-use plastics choke our ecosystems, break down into microplastics in the ocean, leach toxic chemicals into our waterways, the list goes on. The sooner the rest of the world follows suit, the healthier our bodies and the cleaner the environment will be. Speaking of cleaner environment, this February, Australia rejected a coal mining application for a plot of land six miles from the Great Barrier Reef. This is the first time that Australia's government has blocked a new mining application, despite them being one of the largest exporters of coal and gas in the world. This is a major step in the right direction for the Australian government, placing climate goals and wildlife preservation over profits. And as climate goal deadlines draw closer, it looks as though many nations around the world are slowly making progress towards these. A recent study on US energy production found that in 2022, 40% of the country's energy came from renewable sources, and this trend has continued through 2023. 
This increase has been accelerated by solar and wind investments coming from the private sector along with the Inflation Reduction Act, getting one of the world's largest carbon emitters one step closer to carbon neutrality. This worldwide shift towards renewables has led the International Energy Agency to predict that global fossil fuel demand will peak before the end of the decade and will decline year after year. Whether this will be fast enough to meet some ambitious climate goals is to be determined, but it looks as if the world has finally started to pay some serious attention to the existential threat of the climate crisis. One final thought to wrap up the State of the Climate 2023. This year we have seen the continuation and escalation of multiple military conflicts around the world. First and foremost, the loss of innocent civilian life is an unacceptable tragedy and deserves to be condemned, full stop. But tying this back to climate change, there can never be carbon neutrality while in a state of war. Tanks, bombers, and ammunition cannot be made or used without massive amounts of carbon emissions. For some perspective, the US military produced 48 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent over the last year while not even being in a state of war. This is more than the entire country of Denmark produces in a year, a nation of nearly 6 million people. If humanity is to reach carbon neutrality in a timely manner, we cannot continue aggressive military action. For the sake of all those living today, and all those who will live tomorrow, de-escalation is the only way to usher in a sustainable world. Well that's all I've got for you this year. Thanks for watching this year's State of the Climate, and let's all keep working together to continue the progress we've made over the last year. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to support Planet Zero. Happy New Year, YouTube.